Hey, where the brights coming to you live from our studio. And we're coming to you on Saturday instead of Sunday because we were bored. That's right. I'm like, what else can we do? There's nothing else left bored. to be fixed. We're I not have, bored. I think I have fixed everything around the house <laughs> that needs fixing. Yes, yes. And I don't know. yeah, you yeah. have. And um, so some of my girlfriends, we were texting each other some pictures of what our husbands were working on. And Natalie texted me a picture of Lance. He was the hot tub repairman. Yesterday, Richard was the treadmill repairman. And All of a sudden, I realized I'm fixing your broken stuff. I know. I'm so happy because so the things that I was about to get another treadmill. So whenever the flood hit our house, <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. And so when our house flooded in 2017, all of our stuff flooded and our treadmill. Okay, I do not have corona. I just have all of a sudden I got this scratchy throat. <clears throat> Sorry. Are you sure? <clears throat> no, man, you can't even have a cold so nowadays. <laughs> you, you can't even have a man. You, you man. Are you sure? You cannot social social distance from your spouse. That is not the rule. I don't know. I think <laughs> so, you just have something. So whenever uh, the the um, Harvey took out all of our stuff in our house. Um, we put the treadmill out to the curb like all the other stuff that we did, but our brother-in-law was here helping kind of get the house and everything, and he took it all apart, and he had it all laying out across the grass for several days, and it dried out, and he put it together, and it actually worked again. So I've, I've been able to get on the treadmill every, you know, every day that I can, and, but it has no incline. So it's okay for a while, but and I felt so, kind of like I was cheating. So my my fix all is yeah, just put some books underneath it and run a little faster, you know. <laughs> so I kept saying, Richard, I think you can fix it. I think it can be fixed. He's like, No, it's it's done. It's done. It's toast. And so I started watching YouTube videos, and I said, I think you can fix it. And so I've been waiting, and I've been nice. I haven't said a word about it. I just get on it. And I was like, Lord, I'm just gonna buy me another one. That will cure him. If I tell him uh, I'm gonna buy a new treadmill, oh, oh, that no. all of a sudden he is the uh, treadmill repairman like he was in there with a the little light on his head and <clears throat> he was fixing it and then he stop I just have a tickle in my throat yeah <laughs> <clears throat> so um so then I fixed it right so fixed and I it. wanted oh, yeah, her to go see it and I go I had it all the way you, set up for an did you fix it and you said and if I said yeah sure did then she wouldn't have gone you know there's no excitement in that so I had a little bit of fun I said hey I burned everything up because said, engine burn. Did you smell it? That's what you he couldn't smell. I said you didn't smell it, and she's all like, and then all of a sudden she's all like, no, I didn't smell it, and I go, goes, and so I'm trying to get her to, because if somebody would have told me that, boom, I'd have got up, I'd have walked over there to see what the problem was, right? And she's just sitting there talking to me, and so I'm like, okay, that's not working. Um, so he was trying to trick me right. into going into looking at it because he did actually fix it, but he wanted to act like he didn't fix it. Right. I wanted so he her to go in and see no, it. And he's telling me, no, it doesn't work. And he has the straightest face, and he would work on pump like he could be have a job on pump. So I told easily. her that it burned up the motor and that I actually, because I was trying to push it over, and I think I broke her brand new oh, yeah. laptop. Then he said, and then the laptop. Because I'm trying to get her to get up. And she's just sitting there, she's just talking to me, and I'm like, and, and little by little, I'm melting. Like I am just <laughs> going into a puddle because she it's like. Crying. Let's just say this: if you're, ha if you're, we're all home with the Corona thing, where we all can't go out of our house. I personally thought. Do not do practical jokes. This is not I the thought, time. This I is thought, not the platform I, for practical jokes. I thought it was hilarious. That was making me start to <laughs> Until cry. Until she started crying, and I thought, uh oh. And I said, Richard, it's the only outlet I have. Like that's, you know, like so, I don't have, I, can't, I don't have any any my, exercise equipment other than you. <laughs> <laughs> my next, my <laughs> cleaning up after you, and that's not an exercise that's not what for I was me. Thinking, but. So I said, okay, problem solved. I guess you're gonna have to walk along the bio yes. like everybody else. So she's all like, no, I don't want it. It's hot, sweaty outside. And then she starts crying. Mark, I wish we could go to Papa Cito's. I guess we could, man. Well, I wish we could too. Oh, well, we could get it to go, but then we have to send it to him. So anyway, all we that was happening it. was um, him trying to. So that, all that to say that we are making sure we are staying busy. I don't know. I'm watching these people that are watching Netflix and they're taking naps and they're like, this I is the best seen... vacation. We have not had one down second. Okay, I saw two minutes of Ozark. All right, yep. I haven't even been able to watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to. That's why. No, we're not. That's the Lord. He's no. telling you to watch it. <laughs> um, so, so we have not stopped. Like our everything has been busier. Yes, we're not going out on um, uh, like going to gigs and go events and out of town and doing all that. So we thought we'd have more time to get things done. But we're actually 
there are so many things that have been coming out as things that because life's changing and different things are happening and trying to do things online and kind of figure out and be um, resourceful and figure out new ideas and different things and so uh, we just thought we wanted to check in with you guys and just talk a little bit about marriage and what's happening now with everybody kind of um, you know stuck at home with each other um, we talked about it that first happened and it was like yeah that's what we're gonna do and Chris is all you know? like hey slim and slimmer you right look at this y'all it's almost 50 pounds he's got right. like two more pounds and he'll be at 50 pounds he, I told him he lost a small a small child not like lost him at the mall but yeah like a know. seven year old average average seven year old weighs about 50 pounds so he actually lost a small child <laughs> that's some comedy right there um, so we wanted to check in, and, and we were talking yesterday about really funny about what you pray for and about what, about what you say, how things can be so literal. So Richard and I, when after years of a dysfunctional marriage, which some of y'all know our story, um, when things started to actually get a little bit better, Richard said to me, and he had heard it in another in a marriage class, that there are no doors or windows. And he said, in this marriage, there are no escaping. There's no doors. There are no windows. There's no escaping. That we're making this work. Little did we know how true those words would come to pass because now we have no windows or doors and no escape <laughs> well we didn't have windows and doors. well i mean but you know you can't like there is you no escaping escape this, you can't right. go where are you gonna go to a hotel like this I can't, is crazy yes. i mean this is just... i remember back when we were first together and i would threaten to leave all the time like where am i gonna go now i'm gonna go sit in the car no. Like, I can't go anywhere. I can't go to a hotel. I can't you can go sit in a car. Yeah, I can do that. That's about it. Man, I can just imagine, though, because not everybody is in a, in a good place. And if this would have happened to us eight or nine years ago, it would have been, it would have taken a toll on our marriage. Um, it would have been extremely hard because, you know, I, we just really didn't want to be around each other a lot. So I can only imagine being forced into a situation oh to where we are together you know all the time and you know but I, I look at it like this if I'm going around the house and I'm looking for things to fix and put back in order and clean and throw away and you know do stuff that I have time to do now why not do some things that are out of the ordinary if I have an issue because you know people seem to think that divorce if we can't if we'll try to look at let's get married but if it doesn't work out we'll just get divorced well, divorce is a symptom of a problem. It's easier to get divorced, believe it or not, than it is to work on your problems. But as we start to you work on, at me when you said that. no, no. As we <laughs> start to work, to work on your, on your on problems, problems. You know. <laughs> but as, you know, what I didn't realize was that God put us together just to do that, to work out. If I'm getting angry, that's a, there's an area in my life that I need to get help from God in on that in, in that area to take guidance from him if she says something that pings on me why is it pinging me why am i upset about it you know it could be past arguments and fights that we've had or uh with other people that we've had other marriages um but man we've got to work through these issues so why not do that now why not come out of this ahead if we had time to fix things around our house we have time to fix our marriage like this is a great time for us to be able to do that uh, now now is the time for us to work out our stuff you know, this is a time for us to press into our spouse, to turn toward our spouse and not turn away from our spouse. Now, I do believe that during this time, it's okay for us to have some time together. Uh, we need some apart time. We're stuck in the house together, but you can still go to your corner and they can go to their corner. You can do some stuff. Uh, you don't have to be all up on each other the whole time and in each other's grill give each other some space but also don't make it to where all you're doing is, is being apart or just doing stuff with the kids if you have kids just doing that marriage dance we need to be pressing into our spouse right now now's a great time to be asking them how are you feeling what are you going through what's um you know let's work through not everything major but let's try let's maybe this is an answer to, i feel like this is an answer to a lot of our prayers we prayed about our marriages we prayed about time with our spouse or being too busy God's giving it to giving it to us now. What are we going to do with it? And if we're not used to it, if we're not, because this, this isn't the norm, okay? So if we're not used to spending uh, extra amount of time with our spouses or extra amount of time with our kids, it could be a daunting task. It could be stressful. Um, it, it could be hard, not easy, you know. But in time, I mean, even with us, for the first few days, and it's not like we've been quarantined. We've been going to the store here and there. Uh, she's been home a lot more than I have. Um, but it, it, it was a little bit, it was different. It's different, yeah. you know, so we can't expect that everything's just going to be the same. 
there was some things that were happening different feelings emotions you know i got very emotional the first two or three days thinking about my family that have passed and have gone to heaven you know and it just it just tore into me and i'm looking through pictures and i'm crying like a baby and you know but it was just it was where did that even come from right and i'm thinking lord what lessons are you trying to teach me right now in this time of being home uh, our children are adults now and worrying is, is it going to do anybody any good okay it's just going to shorten your lifespan yeah. because it stresses you out and stress isn't good for us what can we do yeah. what can we learn from this how can we teach our, <laughs> our adult children what can we talk to them about because it's no longer teaching we're more of an example so what are we doing yeah yeah so we just want to um also talk a little bit about sex so um you know we're so people are saying you know, everybody should be having more sex right now with marriage and if you're in a good place definitely this is some good time i know the kids are there but like uh I've i'll heard, be right back oh yeah sorry somebody, somebody at the door um but we should be pressing in so i said richard and i talked yesterday about what would we do right now if we had been in the um place that we were in a few years ago and we were going through this right now and people were saying oh hey married couples have more sex you know maybe this is the time maybe it's not a time for those people to have more sex maybe to have a little bit of sex but for you to be able to start talking to one another and finding out about each other's heart um, pressing into to that area because when you when you're a wife a wife's number one need is emotional security so if you're meeting that need of emotional security then the sex parts gonna come naturally as she's feeling loved because that's how we typically how women feel loved is that is to feel emotionally secure um, your met Richard always says you know your marriage is gonna get better or it's gonna get worse it's not gonna stay the same so what are we doing right now to make our marriage better this is so weird to not have him right here but someone rang our doorbell so someone was at the door so um, I wrote a couple notes because I was talking to some friends this week about parenting and stuff and there's some people that are super stressed out like our kids are bigger right now or you know they're grown so we don't have little kids at home but our kids are uh, our friends have kids that uh, are home every day you know they're all home and they're having to homeschool and they have careers and now both parents are at the home having a career and trying to homeschool and trying to do all these things and as a parent with kids that are grown and looking back so what you know what would I tell the old me if I had been in this situation and our kids were little right now and knowing what I know now what we know now is that I would say my favorite saying is let it go you know right now whatever frozen <laughs> right now in school if they were normally in school it would start winding down it's the end of the of the school year it's the springtime things would start winding down naturally anyway um, they're not gonna they're not going to fall through the cracks in a few yeah. weeks. But that Teach was them. you being a parent. If you were a parent, our kids would be going great next year. If I was the one parenting, they would they make them stay. I mean, I know. I probably back then I would have had color coded everything, and everybody had been miserable, and it had been rules, rules, rules. But looking back, telling myself now, as I've grown, things that I wish I'd done differently. Now is the time to man. Let's homeschool. If you're going to homeschool your kid, I homeschool my kids for a while. If you're gonna homeschool, teach them some life lessons. Right. It's not just about core math, core math, or whatever. Show them why they need to save. Yes. Show them why they need to have yes. a thousand dollar emergency fund. Yes. Show them Show them why they need to have six months worth of yeah. a mortgage payments saved up and bill payments just in case somebody. Show them how what life insurance yes. looks like and what regular insurance looks like and show them, how to show them what bills look like every single month. Well, you know, freak them out. But I mean, yeah, no, like, freak them out, man. Them, <laughs> freak them out. Let them right. see. I'm only three. Why the stress is coming on? I need your pennies. Um, but you know, teach them how to clean. Because it. see, yeah, that'd be funny. Because I didn't do that, son. Now I have to break into your piggy <laughs> yeah, bank. Because of that, you know, teach them how to organize a closet. Teach them how to change the oil. Let them see you mow the grass. Give them some things that are life lessons. Learn how to cook. Teach them how to make some stuff. Even if they're little, they can have little chores. They can learn things around the house. Now's the time. You know, it's one thing to give our kids all this education and they can walk away with all these diplomas on their wall, but I see kids that are not kids anymore, they're grown kids, that can't even function in everyday life. They're sm they've got all kinds of papers to show, they have careers, but they're falling apart when it comes to uh, everyday life stuff. You know, show them, if your toilet cl is clogged up and you're having homeschool, show them how that works. How do you unclog a to toilet? And It's easy, you call your husband. Yes, watch some YouTube. <laughs> and if you're one of those guys that go, I don't, my husband doesn't build stuff, watch some YouTube. I'll tell y'all, in seven, it's almost 17 years Richard and I have been together, I did the cooking for 99% of the time. In the last 
five or six weeks, maybe. Yeah, Richard has learned how he's learning how to cook. Chris. He's becoming a keto uh, cook. He every night like it's something new that he's making, and it's kind of like we're switching that role. And it's so nice, and it's so and it's okay to do that. And I just love watching him do it. Like he's getting all into. To fitness and eating right, and he looks all hot because he's lost fifty pounds, and he's feeling good. And um, Look, tonight, I just want to cuddle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so then we were saying, what if you had a blended family right now? What would that be like? Because we had a blended family, and or have a blended family, but what would that have been like if maybe you you switch off times with your um, your ex? Normally, but right now you're not able to do that. Now is the time to connect. I would just say connect. Can we have? social media we have um zoom we have t- our phones rules without relationship equal rebellion and maybe if they were with you a lot of times you're just doing rules right now there are no rules if they're not at your house so maybe now is the time to build that relationship so that you don't have that rebellion yeah, you know later absolutely. on absolutely uh, the other thing is if you're an adult right now and they're saying what to do if your kid wait first of all what to do if your kids are bored y'all what do we do what did we do as kids? We did not have all these screens. Yeah, here's a sandwich and a Coke. Get on your bike and don't come back until this, you better be back before, right as it's getting dark. Before the street lights come on, you need to be home. Right. That's well, what, no, that was us back in the day. Yeah, we could play out for We had no I know helmets. I didn't have any elbow pads. There was no locks on no cabinets. There was no mm-hmm. seat. Oh, we had seat belts, but my dad made me tuck them in underneath so that they so wouldn't they, show. Yeah, so they didn't You know, and we got to sleep on the back of the windshield or the back of the window where that had that little ledge. Yeah, on vacation, that's where you got up in that little area. There was no strapping. Yeah, on vacation, in. man, we didn't even get out of the driveway before my dad had us crack a beer for him. You know, that was vacation to me. <laughs> but what I was talking about is boredom. If your kids are bored. Let them learn. Let them read. I mean, I can remember spending most of my childhood underneath the dining room table to get away from my siblings, reading books, and having using my imagination. It's okay, okay for kids to be bored a little bit. Let them figure out boredom. You know, let them figure out imagination. Give them some maybe some stuff, and then let them have it. Don't try to control every minute of every day. This is the control person looking back, wishing I had done things differently. And it's okay for us to go back to the way things used to be. I, I saw Dave Willis was talking about our ancestors lived in one room with their families they did it so we can do it you know we can mm-hmm. live in a house <laughs> uh, and then adults if you're bored there are plenty of things I don't know how anybody is bored right now I honestly do not know how anybody is bored right now I'm not going to say anything because you'll put me to work again <laughs> no you've been, you've been busy on your own I haven't really well, there's, you know what I realized that I realized there is a lot that needs to be done around the house that has been neglected not that it was out of order it just it could use some going through and some cleaning up and donating or getting rid of or throwing away. Um, you know we don't need to have excess of everything. No, and no. and we can um, think of some new ideas of things that you can do. I, my I, one of our girlfriends um, has two little ones and she needs a she needs a break and so we she was like I need a virtual babysitter and you're just kind of kidding to a text but we th- I thought you know what can we do <laughs> what can we do to help so I ordered a couple of books that my kids liked at that age and I'm willing to go on and read to them online for a few minutes each day or whatever we work out you know stuff like that um, I started packaging up yesterday all these things that that I can send care packages to our friends that have kids and there's just things that you can do. Order some Amazon stuff, make some little packages. Kids are going to be excited to get crafts in the mail. And just think outside the box. Let's do some new, do new and different things. There's no reason that we should be sitting around. And I, I saw someone say, um, oh, uh, the, you know, eating all this food that everybody's eating all their snacks. Eating all your supplies. What? what? Like, don't be stress eating. Do some stuff and don't be just stress eating. Like, be do stress working. Yeah. Right? That's good. I know. <laughs> I mean, Richard and I were saying, well, we're going to come back to, to church in a few weeks and we're going to walk in and we're going to be like, either like, whoa, look at you. Oh my gosh. Like, or whoa, look, look at, at you. you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to be the person that was like, wow, I got it in shape and I took care of myself during this time? Our immune systems need to be strong. We need to be taking care of ourselves. This is the time to do it. This is not the time to let ourselves go. Yeah. Right. So anyway, we just wanted to check in, give you a couple of little things that we are learning along the way, things that we've heard from other people, some tips. Um, Guys, you know, some- we're all about marriage, you know, because we know that without a shadow of a doubt, I don't care what shape 
your marriage is in. It could be you just found out your husband or wife was uh, unfaithful. It, it could be the worst possible scenario, but when we do it right, even at that point, you know, there's a reason that we're broken. There's a reason we have issues. There's a reason, you know, a friend of ours, Joel Mom, said it so perfectly. He says, there's not one documented marriage problem, not one. It's people with problems who get married, all right? Marriage done God's way works 100% of the time. We have to understand what forgiveness is, what grace is. We have to, and I understand that there's, uh, you know, people that have mental conditions and it goes beyond just normal activity. Um, but there are things that we can work through and talk through and help each other grow through. That's what a husband and wife is supposed to look like. That's what marriage is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to be uh, pristine and beautiful and just peachy, you know, peaches Perfect. and cream all the time. That's, that's not even reality. The reality is in the areas that I'm, I struggle in, hopefully my wife is strong in and vice versa. Where she's struggling, I'm strong. And we're able to, to help each other and lift each other out of this muck and mire that the world will put us in. And the world, you know, I, I don't want to get all preachy and Christianese on, you know, what's the world and living in the spirit. But people that do not have a relationship with God want to tell you, oh, you don't have to put up with that. Oh, that's not the way. Oh, you, he's supposed to make you happy. She's supposed to do this. They're supposed to, you know, that, they're, 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 who is they? All right. This is a threefold cord, me, my wife, and God. And that's how it has to be. And we have to help each other work through some stuff from childhood, some stuff that we have, and most of it that we have found out has been through childhood. We need to work through these things so that, man, we build a foundation that God wants us to, and, and build it on Him so that our marriages can survive things like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do something now. Do something. If y'all can barely even talk, look at something that your spouse did today that was beneficial, that was good, and for just people. thank them for doing that. Just thank them for doing that. Take a know? breath. Take yeah, breath. I breathe. Yeah. You know, I did more than breathe, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. You've been... Don't shut me down. <laughs> I have to say, I have to give it to him. I'm just thankful, though. Like we said at the beginning, we're just thankful we're not where we were a few years ago in our marriage. It would have been something hard. Like this. So that's why we come on here is to encourage you guys. We have about, I don't know, I think almost 60 videos now in our video library. You can check them out here on the on our page. We're actually starting a new page called Brighter Marriage, which is our 501c3. Because um, people get confused <laughs> sometimes with our real brides, with the comedy, and then also with our marriage stuff. So we're going to try to separate those two and keep the real brides and our comedy and uh, speaking stuff on one page and then switch over to having Brighter Marriage where we just do just marriage stuff. So if you haven't text bright b-r-i-g-h-t to the number 66866 on your phone you just pull it out like you're going to do a text message you type in bright and then you type in the number 66866 and push send it will send it a message to us that we will send you the youtube video uh link and some other stuff and then we can stay in contact we're going to have a couple of giveaways coming up here in the next week or so just to kind of give people some something to look forward to well, it used to it's be a tickets. free gathering <laughs> we used to give tickets but we don't have any events right now going on because everything's on hold but we're going to maybe send maybe do some stuff where we can send out some a couple of things to you guys so if y'all will text that and if you've already done it you're Can't still going to be mask <laughs> Gloves, toilet paper, hey. Hey, don't be promising that. If we could get that, that would be like the miracle. So, um, also and in the 66866. Six, six, six. Yeah, 66866. Six, six. Um, Chris, down put in, a nine. Down in the comments below, put some ideas. If you've got some marriage, I saw some of the... the um, messages coming up about ideas that you have if you're a teacher or if you're a parent or something that's working put those down there so other people can read it and we can all help each other out if you guys have some questions or some things you'd like us to address in the next couple of weeks with doing going through all this put those down there or send us a private message so we love you guys we came here on saturday because uh, we have we might be there tomorrow too who knows i don't know if i'm doing all this again tomorrow so <laughs> Just did it today because we have to do some marriage videos for some other ministries. So we just thought we'd do it all yeah. one day. Just there get, you it, go. get her done. So we love you guys. Thank y'all for, my head is. <laughs> for tuning in. There and you go. Thank next you. Next time Chris. you see Richard, you might not even be able to see him because he It'd might be just like, disappear. man, look so at scary. you. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We love you. Talk to you soon. And peace out. Deuces. <laughs>